Hey, hello there. This is going to be a tutorial on how to build this procedural billboard generator with neon letters. It's actually fairly simple. As you see here, it's just a backplate with color and on top the neon is floating. So let's dive into the notes, how this works. Uh, it's all driven by an image and this way of working lends itself to a lot of things that you can do. Uh, I used this method also to create the uh, embroidery stitches and also some other tools. So if you know how to do this, you can also think of your own tools by just using images. It's very versatile, you can just change it up. Uh, as I have here, I have another billboard uh, text and it uh, works the same. I also have black and white. What it does here, it's taking the um, lighter colors and it cuts it out. And then from the cutout, I take the outline and create the tubes from there. So let's see how we can do this. So here I'm starting with a grid. When we go to the viewer node, then we can see what happens. Let's give it a little bit more space. Go into this uh, preview mode. It's just a grid, so I make it one by one meter and give it enough vertices. If we zoom in, we see here all the little squares, which are all the vertices. I can also set the resolution a bit lower and make it a little bit faster. Uh, and then next, uh, if we go in here, this line, I am deleting some stuff. What am I deleting? I am deleting all the lighter parts. So if we go in here, this is the image and the image looks like this. We're going to rendering and the image that I imported. I made this picture in uh, Illustrator and I'm uh, making a dark background. And the foreground is really light. So Blender uh, sees this and cuts out all the lighter parts. So if I uh, look here, I also use a color ramp. So I'm also using the UV map from the grid. So everything is positioned nicely. You can see here that I'm also deleting some uh, extra space in the top. I'm doing that by uh, taking the position, separating the Y axis, and then seeing if it's greater than a certain amount. As you can see, I make it a little bit more narrow to cut it off. I like to work in squares because the proportions always work when you also make a square in Illustrator or Photoshop. So that's why I'm just cutting off the sides here. You can copy this if you want. I can also turn it off for now so uh, it's not in the way. Uh, if we go in here you see uh, this is the image. Then I'm using a color ramp and setting it to constant. So it's like a hard line. And by this, I can say how much I want. So this is too much uh, uh, to the right with this arrow. And it takes away because this color was a little bit darker. So it doesn't take that bottom color anymore. So that's why I'm sliding it over here. I think I set it to 0.2, which is fine. Uh, and then I'm putting this in delete points you can also use delete faces yeah then it gets a bit too narrow so let's leave it to points um, next what i do is i take the outline so it takes the outline here of the box uh, or the, the the square and it takes also the outline of all the text and how that looks it's just uh, greater than one with an edge neighbors plugged into it and there it finds like the, the outer edges and I'm making them into a curve. I also put a switch in here so I can switch between mesh and curve. That's what this little node does. And then you can get all the outlines as you see here. Then next I'm setting the position with a blur attribute and the position plugged into it set to 20. And with this, if I zoom in, I can scale it down. You see it blurs all the positions and makes it a lot smoother. So 
20 looks fine. Let's keep this uh, at 20. And then next I'm making it into a curve again. So going from mesh to curve. And then I'm capturing the color from the curve. So the whole curve or every curve gets its own color. If you uh, capture it on point, I think I can show you. I turn this off, go into preview mode. Set this to multiply point. It takes more colors from the, the scene. I don't want all the colors. Like I'm also using this delete. Here you can see what happens then. It takes like from the surface below, all the pixels, it takes the color. I don't want that. I want to take the from the whole spline. So then this is a spline, this is a spline, it takes the whole color. And what it does here is I am sampling the nearest surface. So I'm taking this surface, plugging it into nearest sample nearest surface, and then I sample the color from the image. Um, and this one off, you see this is actually uh, what we have, the data there where the color is picked from but you can see that the blue the darker color is also there and then also the lighter color has a, a gradient to it and it uh, has a hard time picking the right color and that's why you get this uh, all these different colors but I found when I take the inverse so the knot from uh, this color ramp and I first delete uh, a bunch of geometry, like all the blue parts I delete, it works. It works a lot better. You still see slight differences in the color, but I actually like that because you have that in neon tubes. Uh, and that's why I keep it. Also, I set this now to 300, but I think 500 100 gives more detail, gives a better resolution. So, there. Uh, if I put a viewer node in here, you can see how that looks. So I'm not deleting here uh, the inside, but I'm deleting the outside. And the outside has the right colors. So that's why this sample nearest color works. So let's uh, take this away. Here I'm uh, storing this attribute by the name of color. And I'm setting here the material emission for this uh, for these neon tubes and if we go in here I'm just using an attribute with the name color to drive the color of these neon tubes and I did it this way because you can just make an image just one image with uh, different text different colors and then it takes all these colors from the text and it becomes really easy and quick to create all kinds of different billboards then, uh, yeah, what I'm doing here is obvious. I'm here, we just have the curves and here I go from curve to mesh and I'm using a curve circle for that. So just a very small radius. Actually, I'm always setting this to millimeters just not to have to type a lot of zeros. So it's 2.5 millimeters here. Yeah, you can scale it up to have a real scale, but this is just the scale that I set it up in. Uh, in a later stage, I want to convert this to a tool, so compress this all into one node, so it becomes a bit easier to use if you are not familiar with nodes, uh, and make a lot of additional styles that you can use. Like this is one style, but you can use extrude the text, for example, or place a grid behind it, or uh, and this way it becomes also very usable in scenes and you can make copies quickly and change the image and have a lot of billboards. So I'm going to work on that in the future. Um, but for now, here we have this, uh, these lines, which is the neon tubes. And what I'm also doing, if I delete the viewer node, uh, delete this one, this is just a back plate. What I'm doing is I use the grid, I'm uh, putting it a little bit more back 
or else it's intersecting with the neon tubes. I'm also storing the color for the back plate. Don't do this, then it has no color. And here it has a different material, back plate material. Back plate looks a little bit the same. Oh, the emission, I uh, switch it up a little bit. This is the neon tubes because I'm also using the emission um, socket, setting it to four, so illuminate. And the back plate is just the image, like attribute color plugged into the base color. If I plug it into uh, emission, then it will glow as well. But now I think it's nicer to see really the darker background and then also the lighter neon tubes at the top. So this is how you can create this type of billboards. Um, showing you again, it's easy just by picking the image with the color to change it and make a billboard. Uh, you can also make this delete geometry in the front to be able to scale it a little bit. I imagine when you make billboards, they're usually rectangular in this direction. So change it, do it in the X direction, or maybe combine two X and Y, so you have a little bit more playroom. Um, but this is generally how to do this. You can find this on Blender Market for a few uh, bucks, and uh, I'm also donating some to the Blender community, so Blender uh, can improving itself and I'll be improving all these nodes. Also Blender 4.3 is out now, I'm working in Blender 4.3 and all the other tools are going to be updated to work with Blender 4.3 as well. So I hope this helps you out and I see you in the next one. Okay, bye!